Would you take 3.9 seconds in the NBA opposed to not making it at all? Yeah? Even if it meant you have the record for the shortest NBA career ever? Most players on that level don't imagine that being the case for their career, especially when you were good enough to leave school early for the league and be taken by one of the most legendary franchises in sports. Today's feature holds that record and has had a whirlwind life and career since then to say the least, but has bounced back to find his true calling and has a chance to create some really bright days for himself being in his unique position. Yes, he'll always be remembered for those 3.9 seconds tasting his dream, but that's much more than 97% of us can say. He was a sharp shooter in college with two seasons shooting over 40% from three, a player with tight handle and natural feel for the game that can't be taught and expected to be at least that in the league. Here's three reasons why he wasn't. James on Curry on January 7th, 1986. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth. Ash, get him. James Ahn Curry is a 6'3 shooting guard from North Carolina and was a scoring machine in the high school class of 2004. He held the record in North Carolina for most points in a career that was just recently broken by Kobe White. As a senior, he averaged 40.2 points, 7.3 rebounds, and 6 assists. He picked up a scholarship and signed with one of the top schools in the nation. One that he would never attend. Because why? Stunt number one, I was hustling. I ain't gonna lie. Since a sophomore in high school, Curry was committed to attending North Carolina, and the school was just as committed to his arrival. He was dropping 65, 54, 47, crazy numbers almost every game by his senior year and was outplaying some of the biggest names in the state and country. Chris Paul even credits one of his more famous moves to James on, who taught him at a five-star camp they both were selected for. This guy was poised to be the next great guard from the Carolinas, specifically North Carolina, that had the pedigree, the talent, and the blueprint all laid out for him. When that's the case, life has to now completely refocus all its energy to basketball and nothing else. With the background similar to many African American youth in America, it was easy for James Ahn to find an outlet in the streets when times were hard even for a prize recruit with a seemingly bright future. And unfortunately, he just couldn't balance the two, and it was the first point where things took a turn in his growth. During his senior season, Curry was caught in a drug sting that arrested over 60 students along with two of his teammates. He was caught on hidden camera by an undercover agent posing as a student and buying marijuana from James on on two different occasions. Later, Curry would make light of it saying, I was hustling yo, I ain't gonna lie. The Sting placed six felony counts on his record, a suspended sentence with community service and probation. North Carolina rescinded his scholarship and he was kicked off the basketball team and expelled from his high school after pleading guilty to the charges. It's a no-brainer what not having the chance to play for North Carolina did for his career, seeing as it's one of the schools known for turning out NBA draft picks and first-round talent specifically. It could have meant a first-round contract for James on instead of the second-round opportunity he settled for that laid framework for the shortest NBA career ever. Stunt number two, leaving school early. Another point in his growth that I think took a surprising turn was because he left early. Now, I'm all for players leaving school and striking while the iron is hot, and in Curry's case, I found it hard to fault that decision and might even understand him doing it again if given a second chance. But a lot comes with betting on yourself that big. You have to be totally committed, a super hard worker, confident, and a bit lucky for things to all work out. A lack in any of those and careers tend to bust. After his expulsion and scholarship taken away, Curry committed to Oklahoma State and as a freshman, he helped his team to a sort of magical run in the tournament, defeating number four Syracuse and making it to the Sweet 16. 
that year's team won the Big 12 Conference, while North Carolina went on to win the national championship. As a sophomore, he became a full-time starter, averaging 13.5 points a game, shooting 37% from three on five attempts per in 34 minutes. But his team failed to make the NCAA tournament, the first of back-to-back seasons doing so. As a junior, his stats individually improved, but once again, his team didn't make the big dance under Curry's leadership. He averaged 17 points a game, three rebounds, and three assists, shooting 41% from three on over six attempts a game. He was seemingly setting a new scoring record every night, and one team taking notice were the Chicago Bulls, who envisioned him as sort of what CJ McCollum is right now for the Blazers. Against Eddie Sutton's advice, Curry declared for the NBA draft, with Chicago all but promising to select him. A move that was short-sighted for Curry, who without a sure first-round promise, shouldn't have taken that route. It even seems he knew he would round up in the second round, but an opportunity to make the league at all, coming from the trials he had, was too much to pass on, and he stayed in the draft. After two seasons not on the big stage, stats that were solid but clearly would have improved a year after, and a third-team all-conference selection, Curry was betting big on his work ethic and luck. In hindsight, that luck would never come. He was taken in the draft by the Bulls as promised, but in the second round at 51. With no guaranteed contract in hand, he was immediately sent to the D-League and his growth was stunted once again. Who's to say if another year in school would have seen him finish healthy, make the tournament, and put up better numbers could have turned into a first round selection, but I think it's safe to say it would have been more likely than 3.9 seconds. Stunt number three, growth and maturity. Underrated elements to this game that Curry himself admits to lacking and costing him his stay in the NBA. While with the Bulls, he would get into many minor offenses that led to the team eventually waiving him. At the D-League showcase in 2008, he was caught outside his hotel urinating in an alley by an officer and ran from him, leading to a resistant arrest, another misdemeanor, and the team suspending him one game. Or missing a team flight because he claims to have gotten lost in the city on his way to the airport which he says isn't the only reason, but a big one why he was possibly blackballed from the NBA. His past had caught up to him, and with continued growth and maturity issues on his part, franchises couldn't see a way he could be brought in to help the team, most importantly, their image. He simply developed a reputation that he couldn't escape and continued to build on that reputation all throughout his career. He would split time overseas and the D-League over the next few seasons, and in 2010, he signed with the Clippers D-League team and was called up for his infamous 3.9 second game on January 25th. He subbed into a game with 3.9 seconds left on the third quarter clock. Ray Allen drove to the basket with Curry guarding Rondo and wasn't able to get a shot off. The buzzer sounded and that was it. DeAndre Jordan came in for Curry to start the fourth quarter, and he never saw an NBA floor again. He was sent back to the D-League, where he'd see some success, becoming an all-star, along with more marijuana possession charges, and in 2014, he was waived from the Bakersfield Jam because of an ankle injury, his last professional stint. Curry resorted back to the streets in what he calls the dark days of his life that included numerous encounters with law enforcement and more felony convictions. On April 2017, while gearing up for an uphill shot at an NBA return, Curry was involved in a car accident that broke his ribs and spine, placing rods in his back for support and his NBA return without any. With felony convictions, he found it hard to keep a job, even working as a truck driver for a while before getting into coaching at his local YMCA. That opportunity led to him being a full-time youth coach and personal trainer, which brought him back to basketball, but in a totally different way. His true calling, 
and what he says brings him happiness every day. All in all, Curry may have the shortest NBA career, but his journey doesn't have to end up in disappointment. Him now owning his misfortunes and using them to help and inspire others, I'm sure will bring great pleasure to him and maybe even financial success. Either way, he was a great college player that the ones that remember him respect and took note of what he was able to do. But for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC's stunted growth.